Welcome to Proven Improbable, where we deliver mining insights and bullion sales in the form of physical delivery, offshore depositories, and private blockchain distributed ledger technology. Welcome to Proven Improbable. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Joining us for a conversation are Gregory Beicher, the president, director, and CEO, along with special guest senior project geologist Chris Van Treek of Millrock Resources, a premier project generator. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Maurice. Thanks, Maurice. Pleasure to have you on the program to discuss the latest developments from Millrock Resources' successes in the Good Pasture District of Alaska, which is becoming one of the most highly contested mining districts in the world. Mr. Beischer, before we delve into today's interview, please introduce us to Millrock Resources and share the investment opportunity that the company presents to the market. Sure, Maurice. Well, you know that we're a project generator company, Alaska-based and focused. Uh, we come up with lots of early stage exploration projects and then invite uh, other companies to come in and earn their way into our projects. So we've stuck to this business model and the Good Pastor project is our latest uh, one and uh, one we're particularly proud of. We've uh, been pulling it together for almost five years now. Made some really big moves last spring uh, to stake up the entire district. And uh, now we're uh, really making some advancements on the project. Mr. Beischer, for first time listeners that may not be familiar with the Good Pastor District of Alaska, please provide us with some background on the district and why has Millrock Resources been strategically positioning itself within the district? Well, uh, the Good Pasture District uh, has been mined on a small scale by placer miners or alluvial gold miners, but in uh, around about 1994, a big discovery was made. It became the Pogo Gold Mine, uh, operated for many years by Sumitomo Metal Mining Corporation. But more recently, uh, just uh, about a year ago now, Australian mid-tier producer Northern Star resources bought up the claim uh, the, the mine uh, from Sumitomo and have been making continuous improvements uh, in the, the mine's operation. Uh, I believe that the Good Pasture District will be uh, a gold mining camp of major proportions one day. Uh, multiple mines uh, ultimately with an endowment uh, measured in many millions uh, of ounces of gold. And Northern Star has made some fantastic successes in the first year of operation. Uh, they've uh, made new discoveries, they've uh, recalculated the global resource, and it's now known that uh, there's uh, 6 million ounces of resource and reserves on top of the approximate 4 million that have already been uh, mined previously by Sumitomo. So it's a great mine, it's a high grade mine. Uh, Northern Star has already made more discoveries and they announced uh, even more uh, discovery holes uh, northwest of the mine last week, uh, which we're quite excited about because we own ground to the northwest of the mine. Chris, how did Northern Star find their good pasture deposit? Uh, after Acquiring the mine, they uh, they took a, a look back at the uh, historic CSAMT data, and some of this happened under Sumitomo ownership, and realized that there were very nice uh, conductors from a, a resistivity survey that sat right where the mine workings uh, had been, and uh, put two and two together. And after viewing other area survey results, they uh, targeted the Good Pasture area because it had similar rock properties to the mine and went in and, and drilled where they had pulled up a little short before, about 50 meters short, and um, drilled into this uh, conductor and, and ended up discovering a, a Lisa Zone, which is the, the mine main mine focus uh, area type vein there. So it was a real big technical and, uh, and, and geologic success for him at that point. Let's discuss some of the latest events occurring right now with Northern Star Resources. I was reviewing some of their press releases issued, and they just announced a plan to expand their Pogo mine by 30% with a capital commitment of 30 million U.S. What can you share with us regarding the expansion, and how does it fit into the narrative of Millrock's value proposition on the West Pogo? Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, 
you know, uh, we've just been very impressed uh, with Northern Star. They're clearly an excellent mining company. Uh, they know what they're doing. They've changed the mining methods uh, to be more efficient, uh, to get more gold out of the ground, uh, now ramping up the mill. So I think they're uh, starting to make a, a lot of money with this mine, and I think they're, they're really uh, going to make a fortune with it, uh, especially as the gold price rises even further. And like I say, they've made some uh, great new discoveries, and uh, they published some of those uh, last uh, about 10 days ago. And uh, uh, they, we know that they've been drilling just on the other side of uh, our mutual claim boundary for almost two years straight, flat out. And uh, they announced finally some of those results. And there's some really high grade intersections in what appears to be uh, multiple stacked uh, zones of uh, quartz vein uh, gold mineralization. Mr. Beisher, let's provide audience members with a visual and introduce them to the Good Pasture District and, in particular, on the value proposition on the West Pogo. Where the project is, it's in the Tintina Gold Province. I'm here in Anchorage. You can drive up. To Pogo, lots of activity over in the Yukon. Brand new mine, the Eagle Mine, just started producing last week, and there's some pretty darn big ones in Alaska. 45 million ounce Donlin Creek, 13 million Kinross Fort Knox mine, and of course Pogo, where there's 10 million ounces known now. Northern Star operating, and that's of interest to us. You can drive from Fairbanks uh, about two hours to get right to the mine. So paved highway to here, and then. Uh, uh, gravel road to the mine. There's that gravel road coming in from the highway. Uh, ends up coming our, across our property shown in blue uh, right to the mine. So the mine property shown in gray and they also own that little block there but we own all the blue stuff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, recently we did geophysics here uh, uh, trying to find extensions of the mine and you know just 10 days ago Northern Star announced a brand new discovery northwest of the mine, right about there. And uh, we know they've been drilling away on it for the last two years, but finally they made some announcements about it. And there's some pretty darn high grade results uh, in there. And, you know, we've always had these great geochemical indicators uh, right beside. And there's the mine, there's their new discovery. If you come along straight, it's right where uh, we've got all this hot geochem. Um, Zooming in now, just to the West Pogo part of our claim block, uh, you know, being close to a mine is a good thing. Uh, often that's where other mines are found. There's uh, the, the mine there, that's the tailings facilities, that's the mill, and the veins they're mining sit flat lying in this hill. The new discoveries down in the valley, probably just over here off the photo. Now looking down, that photo was taken from here at Tourmaline Ridge, looking east back to the mine. There's the hill and um, projected to surface. There's the veins that they're mining. Uh, uh, there's the, uh, the tailings facility right there. Uh, the mill is in here. And uh, there's the road coming in across our property. Uh, you can see that there's a few old prior holes that were drilled before Millrock received this property. Um, and uh, uh, now, now we know that they've made a new discovery right there that dips off to the northwest. By the looks of it, going to come onto our ground. And if you go along strike, it would come onto our ground. And if you look at magnetics, uh, you'll see the, the, the magnetic high areas are the, the, the pinkish magenta colors. And um, <clears throat> Uh, the, the veins at the Pogo mine occur on the flanks of this diorite intrusion in a magnetic low. And then they announced six months ago this new discovery called Central Loads right on a mag low. And now this most recent discovery, what they call the Good Pasture Deposit now, is right on that mag low beside this diorite high. So that makes this magnetic low look pretty darn intriguing because it's right in the down dip direction. And this magnetic low in Aurora Creek uh, where we have some great surface results is very interesting as well. There's those results. These are soil samples with gold in them. Yellow is good, orange is better, red is great. And these pinkish colors are really high results. So clearly, 
this uh, Aurora Creek Valley is of great interest. Zoomed in again, looking at map, there's 10 million ounces of gold sitting right there at the Pogo mine. They've added an extra half million there and still drilling. Uh, they haven't announced a resource here, but they've announced that it's 2.3 kilometers long. <coughs> and um, and uh, they've drilled a bunch of holes into it, got some really high grade uh, intersections in at least uh, seven different zones. Uh, so it seems like there's uh, uh, more stacked flat-lying veins than at the mine itself. And uh, so it's pretty interesting to uh, fly around in a helicopter here a few weeks ago. And, uh, you know, they had a, a big drill set up, uh, pounding away holes here. Looks like they're trying to extend the mineralization out that way. And down dip, they were drilling a series of holes from this setup. Uh, they clearly had drilled holes on these three earlier in the summer. And they were getting ready to start drilling down here. And, you know, that's only about 450 meters uh, from our claim boundary. And so uh, I, we did these uh, th two lines of CSAMT survey. So we had to cut lines through the brush uh, and then uh, do the geophysical survey. It's a pretty involved survey. And, uh, but we used the exact same parameters as they had used to do lines of CSAMT on their part, and that's how they found this. Uh, so uh, we wanted to use the exact same survey, and we did. And as it turned out, we got uh, the conductive responses we were looking for in the exact spot uh, we were hoping to see them, right, right there in, in Aurora Creek Valley, right where this should strike over onto our property. And we even got one right up here, right in the down dip direction. Uh, so, uh, just couldn't have been uh, better uh, positioned responses. So now I'm going to show you the results in profile or cross-section on line three and line six. So this is line three here, uh, line six below. <coughs> and uh, you can see that um, right there is a conductive zone. It's pretty deep, um, but uh, it turns out it's at the exact perfect depth. If you were to extend from the Northern Star ground, that same vein set over onto our ground, that's almost exactly where it should be. So it's not really strong. It's sort of at the depth uh, capability of the instruments. Um, but, um, and it's about 100 meters more uh, deeper than and the prior drill holes. The company drilled a hole around here at one time uh, and that's about as deep as they got. And if they had drilled a vertical hole, uh, 600 meters, they probably would have got into it. So that's still pretty deep. But if you go now to um, uh, uh, to, to line six, and so this is the lower part of Aurora Creek. Uh, now we've got a really nice, strong conductor, only 150 meters below surface dipping northwest just the same as the, the Pogo and the Good Pastor deposits. And then way up here, this would represent the down dip uh, position. And we've got a really nice uh, northwest dipping conductor there. So uh, just the perfect uh, sort of response that we were hoping for. Chris, you have some very, very intriguing news to share with us on the latest geophysical results. Walk us through their potential significance. We uh, decided that to employ the same methods that Sumitomo used in order to image their conductor, and that's the controlled source audio magnetotellurics. Um, we chose two areas uh, over our more perspective ground and completed the geophysics during uh, August and September. And um, the results are showing conductors that have the correct geometry and an elevation uh, to be an extension of the same type of, of big regional fault that hosts the veining over on the Good Pastor Prospect. So we're, we're very excited about the potential uh, that we're seeing in the area from the latest geophysical survey. Mr. Beischer, Millrock has made a lot of progress at the West Pogo, which leads me to ask, what is the next unanswered question for Millrock Resources? When can we expect a response? And what determines success? Sure. Well, um, 
you know, we're, we're kind of faced at a, a decision uh, right now, Maurice. This is a really, really compelling uh, drill target we've developed on the West Pogo block. Uh, Millrock's approach to exploration has been to always make partnerships and uh, uh, let uh, other companies take the initial drilling risk. Um, this one we feel so strongly about that uh, honestly it's quite tempting for us to raise the money and do the first round of drilling. But uh, having said that, uh, Millrock's share price is only 9 or 10 cents at the moment. Uh, that would be quite dilutive if we were to raise enough money to do uh, what needs to be done, the first 8, 10, or 12 holes. Uh, that would cost us in excess of uh, $3 million. So uh, if we get the right offer, uh, we would probably take it. Uh, but uh, whatever company uh, earns into this project, I'll tell you, we're not going to give it away and they have to come prepared uh, in the first year to drill 10 or 12 uh, holes uh, and that's going to cost several million but uh, I feel very strongly that any partnership we make will require uh, the other company to advance the whole project. There's uh, all kinds of other prospects on uh, the huge claim block that we've staked. Uh, more work needs to be done to bring each of those up to drill readiness. Uh, but they've got a good one to start with at West Pogo, uh, quite compelling target. So that would be the parameters uh, of any company ha uh, making a deal on this project. Gentlemen, I don't know if you play poker, but based on the geophysical results that we received, could we have received a better outcome? Because I'm looking at your nonverbals and they look quite stoic. <laughs> It, it was it was definitely an encouraging encouraging result to to have a predictive model uh, come in with with results that are so far agreeing with with uh, what we were hoping to see in in a geologic sense in the area. So we're very encouraged, Mr. Beischer. Uh, before we close here, what kind of feedback have you been receiving from shareholders? Well, everyone's uh, uh, quite excited. Uh, I mean, uh, not just shareholders, but we've shown the project now to lots of interested mining companies and other explorers. And uh, it's an easy story to tell and an easy one to get excited about. And those companies can immediately see the potential uh, that we've uh, been able to prove. And uh, it's starting to catch on with our shareholders. I think uh, uh, the message is starting to get out that uh, we've really latched on to a, a terrific uh, project at Good Pastor. Mr. Beister, for someone listening that wants to get more information on Millrock Resources, please share the website address. Oh, sure. Uh, just Google www.millrockresources.com. You'll find us. As a reminder, Milrock Resources trades on the TSXV symbol MRO and on the OTCQB symbol MLRKF. Milrock Resources is a sponsor of Proven Improbable, and we are proud shareholders for the virtues conveyed in today's message. As a reminder, I'm a licensed representative for Miles Franklin Precious Metals Investments, where we are providing a number of options to expand your precious metals portfolio from physical delivery, offshore depositories, precious metal IRAs, and private blockchain distributed ledger technology. Call me directly at 855-505-1900, or you may email maurice at milesfranklin.com. Finally, please subscribe to provenandprobable.com, where we provide mining insights and bullion sales. Gregory Beischer and Chris Van Treek of Millrock Resources, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.